Greetings YouTubers, it's the 8th of September 2007 and New Zealand's Prime Minister Helen Clark is currently in Sydney at the APEC leaders meeting preaching to them the gospel of anti-nuclearism. In honour of this I would like to dedicate this video entitled Why New Zealand Should Consider Building Nuclear Power Stations. Firstly let's look at our energy usage at present. Of the 80,000 gigawatt hours we use every year, about a half is used in transport and approximately half electricity generation. Of total energy sources, uh, we can see that about two thirds are fossil fuels, oil, almost all of it imported, gas and coal. Total energy use is also predicted to increase 40% by 2030. That's two more Huntley power stations for electricity alone. Nonetheless, why not use fossil fuels for our extra energy demands? Well, because New Zealand is committed to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Our known gas reserves are also running out. Oil will have to be imported and uh, may, many analysts predict that it will peak in the next decade. And furthermore, being dependent on oil means being dependent on regions that are troubled by corruption and conflict. So why not use renewable en energy generating systems? Well, both hydro and geothermal power are limited by the number of suitable sites. They can be very capital intensive and hydro uh, can have a particularly large environmental footprint. Wind is a source which is only intermittent and, um, and so is solar power. Biofuels would displace large areas of other land uses and would almost certainly need to be heavily genetically modified to increase yield of chemicals with a large calorific value to be competitive. Wave and tidal power remain unproven technologies with pilot projects around the world proving vulnerable to hostile marine environments. So that brings us to nuclear power. First of all, what is it? Well put simply, when the atoms of a heavy element, usually uranium, split, a tiny amount of mass is converted into a huge amount of energy. This heat energy drives a steam turbine to produce electricity. A few grams of uranium in a nuclear reactor would produce enough energy to power your home for a year, while the same mass of chemical fuel would not even be enough to boil an egg. So, why hasn't New Zealand embraced nuclear power to date? Firstly, it hasn't been needed. Existing sources have been sufficient to up to now. It's also claimed that nuclear power is inherently unsafe. Inevitably, the accident at Chernobyl is brought up. However, this was an inherently unsafe reactor design that was never licensed outside of the former Soviet Union, and any New Zealand reactor would be a proper, safe, proven design. There's the issue of nuclear waste disposal, which I'll talk about shortly. There's also the linking in the public consciousness of nuclear power and weaponry. It is true that nuclear fuel can be processed into weapons grade. However, there is a cast iron IAEA system, that's International Atomic Energy Agency system, of tracking every kilo of fissionable material from cradle to grave, which any Kiwi reactor would fully comply with. The problem is the Irans and the North Koreas of this world who defy these rules. The solution is for the international community to impose meaningful consequences for rogue regimes rather than for law-abiding countries to opt out of peaceful nuclear development. The costs of nuclear energy are comp comparable to other generation methods. For example, France and New Zealand have similar electricity costs, despite the fact that France generates 75% of its electricity by nuclear means, while New Zealand generates none. However, the economics of any proposed
proposal would be dependent on the particular local conditions. These factors, of course, would be fully explored in any consideration of nuclear development. Now, waste disposal. This generally takes about 5% of the cost of nuclear power production. 12,500 reactor years of operation by hundreds of nuclear power plants have reduced only 40,000 tonnes of high-level waste. That's a volume less than a small office block. That is a manageable problem. New Zealand, unfortunately, has no sites suitable for deep geological storage. However, it actually makes more economic sense for a few waste depositories in geologically stable areas to receive waste from many areas. So in conclusion, the past week's APEC conference has shown how out of step the knee-jerk anti-nuclearism is in today's world. We cannot afford to limit our options. It's not brave, it's not moral, it's just foolishness.